Thank you for inviting me. I'm very impressed with this convention, as I'm sure all of you are. The purpose of this convention is to give hope to people about alternatives to conventional approaches. The problem with conventional approaches, as you've heard time and again, if you come to these conferences or if you've attended for the last few days, is that chemotherapy and radiation for cancers have been largely unsuccessful, with a few exceptions. They include childhood leukemias, some lymphomas, oral and testicular cancers are generally well responding to conventional chemo at least. Chemo and radiation have numerous adverse side effects. You had lists of these given over the last three days. They also tend to be extremely expensive. If your insurance covers these, it's still very expensive to the insurance company, which winds up raising everyone's rates. The war on cancer has largely been a failure. And the solution, of course, is to consider using alternative therapies. As you have seen, if you've attended the last few days, these are often extremely successful, often better than conventional in most cases. And there's often a lot of good documentation, although we in alternative medicine need a heck of a lot more. The problem has been largely getting people to fund these studies. A lot of the natural approaches are not patentable and therefore there isn't a lot of emphasis for private research to donate lots of money to document this so that insurances cover these approaches. One of the purposes of my talk today is to present you with a few interesting approaches to cancer that are here right now or that are coming soon. It is my belief that cancer will be largely treatable effectively and with minimal side effects within the next five to seven years based on a lot of interesting things that are coming out. Unfortunately, due to the time restraints, I'm only able to talk about a few selected examples of this. Paul S. is an example of a prostate cancer stage 3-4. He had a PSA of 3,281 in April of 2008. For those of you not familiar with PSAs, usually anything above four or five is suspicious, but it isn't so much the amount when it's under 10, it's how quickly it's rising that tends to make you cautious or concerned that this is a likely cancer. This was biopsy confirmed, so there was no doubt about it. He started Apex five months later in April, uh, September, excuse me, of 2008. By October, his lymph nodes had gotten smaller, and this was a very dramatic response. PSA was dropped to 0.25. By February, the prostate mass had decreased by ultrasound and palpation. The lymph nodes were smaller by CT scan. And by March of 2010, there were no signs of cancer seen. The fact that it worked on Paul does not mean that it'll necessarily work on everyone, so I mention that again. Connie C, breast cancer stage four, diagnosed in 1998 initially. She had a double mastectomy, chemo and radiation therapy, and she thought she was cured. It was in remission for the better part of 10 years, but it returned. It may not have been the same cancer. She might have developed a new one due to the radiation and chemo. Who knows? When it returned, it returned in the right breast area, and it had already spread to the cervical spine. She turned her head quickly, and she would actually break a bone. The bones were so weak. She was in a lot of pain. She started on a modified chemo program. She started Apex in May two years ago, considered to have incurable breast cancer, and they discontinued the chemo. She just remained on pain meds was not expected to live. July 10th, 2008, her appetite had improved. The pain meds were decreased. She had an improved CBC, a complete blood count. Her cancer marker, CA-15-3, increased slightly. Now, that sounds bad, but if you consider where cancer markers come from, they come from inside the cancer cell. The more cancer cells you have, the higher your cancer marker. 
And when a cancer cell dies, it releases cancer markers, so it's not unusual to get a little bit of a rise, but you should expect a fall after that if you're getting a good result, and that's what happened in this case. By October of 2008, the CA-15-3 had decreased slowly to 100. She was feeling better. In December, it dropped to 41. Her appetite improved, and by January of last year, she continued to improve and was clinically well. Barbara B. with rectal cancer, metastatic to the liver. Diagnosed in 2007 with colon cancer, she also had metastases to local lymph nodes in the pelvis, the abdomen, and the lungs. A different cancer marker was tracking her tumor. This is chorioembryonic antigen, CEA. It was very elevated at 1383. She started in June two years ago, Apex, and by July, the tumor marker had dropped to 110. By August, dropped to 28, and by November, it dropped to 4.5. She had a CT scan in November with a dramatic reduction in liver tumor size with no METs. By March of 2010, all the liver lesions were calcified and shrinking, and the colorectal cancer completely disappeared. Here's Jim M with lung cancer. It doesn't say which type, unfortunately. It was an advanced stage three. Diagnosed in April of 2007, treated traditionally with chemo and radiation. In June of 2007, the lymph nodes were decreased. He felt better. By September, no sign of cancer on CT. By March, continues to do well, no sign of cancer. Apex appears to have no side effects. It's not terribly expensive. It's probably worth trying. Uh, it's uh, an, an easy solution for a lot of people if you can't afford to do the more expensive ones. I met a lady earlier today <coughs> who has stage four cancer and suggested she try some of the clinics that are having good success with it, but she said, no, I can't afford it. That's one of the things that really almost make, brings me to tears is that so many people who could be treated aren't being treated because we're not covering these therapies. This is one that's not particularly expensive. The company is waiting until they get the definitive studies completed at the Portland Clinic before they publish the results so they can start making claims. As you know, you can't make any claims with the FDA around that you can actually help people with cancer. They'll take you off the market.